Hey, lead guitar players, have you ever wondered what chords are in a key? Someone says, hey man, let's jam in a key, and you're like, I don't know what that means. Let's check it out. Hey, lead guitar players, today I want to show you a quick trick on the guitar to help you remember a music idea. So let's talk musically for a second. When someone says, let's play in a key, what does that mean? A key, there's only 12 of them. There's one for each of our 12 notes. Um, and for each key, it's built on a seven note scale. So if I'm in C, for instance, you know that is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Each one of those is a note. And also in that key, each one of those is a chord. So in the key of C, there's a C note and a C chord. The second note is a D. There's also a D chord in that key. But sometimes if you don't know a scale position or the notes themselves, it's hard to figure this stuff out. So I'm gonna show you a quick guitar trick two little tricks to help you get to this answer very quickly. The first one actually goes back to the pentatonic scale. Uh, a lot of my students know this. We all know this, rock and roll, right? Um, but for me, that means on pattern one of our pentatonic, right here, if I'm on the uh, fifth fret, Um, most people, as I was also told, was told that was an A pentatonic or an A minor pentatonic. And that's true, 50% of it. It's also C major. And what I mean by this is it's called the relative major and relative minor. They share notes and they actually share the key as well, as we'll talk about in a second. But for us guitar players, this pattern one, this home turf, to me, that's where this rock and roll translates right to those first two notes. That's so special because each of these notes is the... Uh, parent key, or in this case, the lower one is the minor, this is the relative minor, and this is the relative major. So this pattern shares two families of notes, the exact same thing. So A minor, if I went from A to A, that would be an A minor pentatonic. If I went from the pinky up, there's a nice happy C major pentatonic. So um, we're going to talk about this in terms of chords. So we're going to use this to navigate our two sides of the family in the key. We'll talk about that in a second. Again, there's seven chords we're looking for. Six of them are very usable. So in the key of music, there's seven chords. The last one, I know it's kind of weird to start with the last one, but that one's a diminished chord. And we're going to put that on the to-do pile for later uh, and worrying about it. The other six are just major and minor, and we use them all the time. So we have to know where they are and what the names are. The easy part is there's three major chords and three minor chords for each key. This is when you've heard people talk about one, four, and fives. Uh, they're talking about the chords in the key. Um, I know we use numbers also to represent triads, like one, three, and five. So the numbers mean the same, but we reference them differently. So going back to our rock and roll rule here, this is pointing to the family of A minor and C major. And again, they share the same house. I like to think of it as one house that has, you win, for the major, you go in the front door, the minor, you go in the back door. Once you're inside, it's the same information. So rock and roll rule, that's one idea. We're gonna see how that adds to the next idea, what I call the L brackets. So when I was younger, I immediately came across this thing. In different capacities. It was Louie Louie, it was any number of rock songs, it was all the blues songs I knew. And I just knew I would played one chord, I'd move across to the same shape, or uh, the same chord on the next set of strings, on the A string, and then go up two frets more. I called it an L bracket. To me, that looks like an L shape. So from this note, there, and up, makes a little L shape. If we use two of those L brackets, and one of these, you can figure out all the chords in the key. Let's do it. So in the key of C, someone says, hey man, let's jam in the key of C. Oh man, all right, let me figure out, think of what the chords might be that I might expect to see. Or if you're writing a song, these will work in the key you're playing. So if we take C major here, that puts our pinky on C. So I'm gonna build an L bracket from there. And being that C, the higher sounding one, is the relative major, then all three of these will be major chords. So I can do a, an E form major chord, like a sixth string bar chord. I can hop over to the A form, or the fifth string, and then up two frets higher. Now, hopefully as a guitar player, you do know the notes on your E and A strings because you've navigated bar chords, power chords, and even scales that way. Remember, there's only 12 notes. Only B and C and E and F are right next to each other on the fretboard. Always. That's a musical truth on every instrument, but on our guitar fretboard, they're always adjacent frets. Um, everything else has a space between it. So um, if I know this is C, I know my first three dots are Gab, G-A-B, that puts me on C. 
On the next three dots on the A string, after G, A, B, that's C, D, and E. E to F is right above that, so there's F. I go two frets higher and there's a G. So in the key of C, I have a C major chord, an F major chord, and a G major. Again, they're all major chords because they're attached to this relative major L bracket. We take the rock and roll rule, we go down to A, the relative minor, the same household, but the minor side of it, and that's a minor chord. And it too has an L bracket that make up the minor chords. So if I hop it over here, I have an A minor chord as an E form chord. I hop it over to my A string, I have a minor chord. And two frets higher again, another minor chord. So that puts together an A minor, because I knew I was on the fifth fret. Uh, on the fifth fret of the A string, that's a D minor chord. And two frets higher is an E minor chord. And that's how you can get all six chords immediately for a key. So you put down the rock and roll rule for the key you're in. So if I need C major, I put the pinky on C. This is also going to help you line up your pentatonic scales when you play leads over it, of course. Um, and from the pinky, the relative major, the higher note, we have an L bracket of major chords. And from the relative minor, we have an L bracket of minor chords. If we looked at them by the names, we have C, F, and G. And down here we have A minor, D minor, and E minor. If you put them all in order, then you would have C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor. Now, if you're at a jam or at a songwriting session, you may want to just jot those down. Because as a guitar player, you use the guitar to reverse engineer the music language. You took the language and you put it on the guitar and then used it to help you figure out what the names and the qualities of the chords are, major or minor. But now as a guitar player, you can reuse that information. Maybe you don't want to play F and G way up here as bar chords. You want a nice chunky lower octave F down here. So you could use an open C and a bar of F down here. You can make any combinations you want as a guitar player. So maybe do a quick little bar chord thing. And go back to C that way. So that's where your options as a guitar player will open once you know the music information. Again, to quickly summarize, you pick a key. Let's pick the key of A major. Then you take your rock and roll rule and you put your pinky on the A because it's going to be a major. So the pinky on A, the first finger's on the relative minor, which is F sharp in this case. So from the relative major, I make an L bracket of major chords. In this case, it's A, D, and E. From the relative minor, again, put down the rock and roll rule, put my L bracket from the lower of the notes, the relative minor, and now these will all be minor. So that's F sharp minor, B minor, C sharp minor, back to F sharp minor. This stuff helps immensely. It's so awesome to see this. Every key is built the same. There's only 12 keys you need to know as a musician. You should know them. It's really not that hard. Most people know more about their favorite sports teams than they actually do about the music language they jam on all the time. So this is a great tool. I hope it helps. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. We have a lot of new courses coming in 2020, so please check them out at LeeGuitarWorkshop.com, and uh, we'll see you guys out there. Happy playing.